Hi, it's Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training. In this video, I want to show you how to write a little bit of VBA code that's going to allow you to sort this database. Initially, we're just going to keep it really simple. We're just going to sort by one column. Let's say we want to sort in ascending order of date for this transaction table. So I've already created a module for myself, and I'm going to create a sub procedure sort on one column. Okay, so what I need to do first of all is tell the code where my database is. And I can do that using uh, the range object. So I can say range a one dot current region, and that will refer to the whole of my database. For the range object, there is a sort method, which is the one I want to use to sort. And if I open the bracket, you can see there are lots of different parameters within that sort method. Luckily, we only need to use a few of them. And the first parameter we're going to use is the key one parameter. Now, this allows you to specify which columns you're going to sort by. And you can do that using the range object. So I can say range. And because I want to sort by date, I just need to specify the top cell in that column. So I can say range B1, that's the top cell uh, that I'm using in my database. Okay, so it's the key one parameter, the primary column that you're going to sort by. Then I can specify the order for that column. So order one, and I'm going to say ascending. I ought to tell the code that I do have headers in my table. So I can say header equals Excel, yes. Okay, now it's saying that because I made a silly mistake. I didn't put a comma in there. Obviously, you have to put commas between your arguments. So let's just play this. And you can see now that the data is sorted in ascending order of date. If I just go through the dates, you can see they are, in fact, in ascending order. Now, another way of referring to columns uh, rather than using kind of range B1 uh, would be to actually name the columns within your table and then use that name within the range object. So how do I name the columns within my table? Now you could do this in code, but that's not really the focus of this video. We're going to actually do it in Excel. So I've gone to my formulas tab. I'm going to select the whole database, so control A, and I'm going to click on create from selection. And I'm going to use the top row only to specify names for my columns. So I click on OK. And so then in the name box, you can see that each column has been named. If I select the name, it selects the appropriate column. So let's go over here and copy this procedure, sub procedure. I'll call this sub procedure sort on column two. And what I'm going to do, instead of putting in B1, I'm going to sort by, say, transaction value. trans value. So that's the name that's been given to this column. Let's see if that actually works. If I press play, yes, we're in ascending order of transaction value. So you can either use a cell reference or a named reference for your key one parameter. So what if you want to sort by more than one column? Well, we can use this as our useful starting point, our old macro sort on malt columns okay um, now i'm just for a while i'm going to get rid of this header parameter and i'm actually going to bring the key parameter down onto a separate line just to make it easier to read and then i can start the next column sort on a separate line so we can do that with key two okay so i could say range well i tell you what let's um instead of having this as trans value let's have this as pay uh, type this is a better idea and then let's have this as trans value Okay, and what we'll do is we'll say the order for this, so order 
2 can be Excel descending. So the primary sort order will be by pay type and then within that by trans value. Now you can see if you look through the different parameters, you can actually go up to key three. So you can sort by up to three columns using this method. We're just going to do the two. I better put my header parameter back in before I try to run this. Header Excel, yes. Right, let's see if this works. Let me press play. So I've got the cash payment types and within that, the transactions values are in descending order. If I scroll down, you can see that's the case all the way down to I get to credit cards and they start descending again. So are you restricted to sorting by a maximum of three columns? Well, thankfully not. Now I'm actually going to borrow this one again, just to show you how, do, how you do this. You can sort by as many columns as you like. Now let's uh, call this sort on more than three columns. Okay, now what you're going to do is essentially create this code over and over again, just sorting on key one, and each time specifying a different uh, range to sort on. So if we start this off with uh, the date column, you actually start off using this uh, way of creating the code with the least important uh, column to sort by. You're working up to the primary sort order when you do this. So we come down again and I'm going to paste that in again. In fact, we don't need all that. So I should have just copied that line there. And we can say uh, we're next going to have product ID, I think. Product ID. Now Let's get it right this time. So I'm going to copy this go underneath and then we're going to have store ID. Okay. And then uh, one more and we'll have last of all, the primary sort order will be payment type pay underscore type. Okay, so let's see if this actually works now. So what we're expecting is payment type is our primary sort within that store ID, within that product ID, within that date. Okay, let's run the code. So here we are, we have payment type as our primary sort within that trans uh, store ID. So if we look at this, the store ID goes up within the payment type. Within the store ID, we've got product ID, so you can see that these are in ascending order. And then within product ID uh, date, that's not as easy to see because we don't have that many duplicates. We do have uh, one or two, uh, but it has actually worked. This is in date order within product ID. So you can keep doing this. You can keep adding rows of code, just using the key one parameter to sort by as many columns as you like.